Typhlosion is in the lowest possible usage tier competitively, but honestly, this thing's been fun for a long time. Fun fact, it has the same exact stats as Charizard, and base 109 special attack and 100 speed is nothing insane, but it can definitely be pretty scary with its exclusive move, Eruption. Eruption is a 150 power move if you're at full HP, and Terra Fire can bring it to crazy levels. It can use the Choice Scarf to make this thing faster than most opponents, and its ability Flash Fire makes it immune to fire moves while boosting its own fire damage. When you're not clicking Eruption on everything, it does have some new coverage with Scorching Sands, which is a ground move that has a chance to burn, along with good old Focus Miss. Typhlosion is generally just pretty spammable, and I think he's cool. Alright, look, Typhlosion being in the zero usage tier, it hurts my soul. This thing, honestly, is really consistent. Since I've started Wi-Fi battling, I've been tossing Eruptions out with this bad boy with a Choice Scarf, and it's such a fun Pokemon to use, and it honestly does still have a pretty solid niche. Obviously, it is outclassed by multiple other fire types, but I like Typhlosion, and it's my goal to show this bad boy some love today. Now, if you're into that kind of thing, you should hit that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, and you could definitely help out. Now, let's go ahead and jump into the battle. So, today we're going up against one of my least favorite things to play against, and that is the sun. You think you're stronger than the sun? You're not. And that is uh, mostly just because they're working with a team that has uh, the Torkoal Drought, they have a Walking Wake, they have a Gouging Fire, and I got one little dancey boy. I decided to lead off with a Hitmontop just because I figured they'd probably go Torkoal. And while, you know, I could potentially rapid spin away some Stealth Rock they set up and just try to waste some Sun Turns, Azelf as a lead, probably not doing much here. So, as I go for the Earthquake there, I get some nice solid chip on the thing. I really do need chip on this Torkoal because this little turtle is kind of the backbone of the team. And being able to set up their Protosynthesis and uh, being able to switch in and out setting up that Drought is just annoying. So I get that Earthquake off. I figure, of course, as they go for the uh, turn one yawn, I actually do not want to be put to sleep here. And I decide to switch into the Typhlosion, just thinking maybe you know, I come in before they set the Stealth Rock up. And then Eruptions in the Sun is looking real strong. So the main goal is to try to get Typhlosion to uh, take advantage of their Sun. Now, they do have some answers on switch-ins to Eruptions, but as they actually double into a Petron, I'm free to click a nice little Eruption here. And uh, they're, they're not going to have anything that switches in super well to that. As you're going to see, the Great Tusk is going to come in and he's just going to soak up some sun here. He's going to protosynthesize the hell out of it and does get a nice little attack boost. However, you, my friend, can use that attack boost in hell because an eruption just absolutely roasts and toasts the guy, especially in the sun at full HP. That is going to hurt you. I don't care who the hell you are. I guess. I take it back. Unless you're freaking gouging fire, because as this fool comes in with his weird bananas on his head, I do not really want to stay in and I'm obviously locked into an eruption. Now, Typhlosion does look good in this matchup, so I do want to try to conserve that thing as much as possible. Problem is, this team does not have good switch-ins defensively here, so I decide, you know what, I'm going to go into a Lolan Jinx here, basically just to die as this thing goes for that earthquake, and I do actually live, which... Is kind of nice because that's just going to be using up sun turns and I'm like, you know what, I could go into Azelf here if this thing is choiced. I probably just don't know what this thing is working with here yet. However, off the top of my head, I know that this thing got that, you know, protosynthesis boost to its speed. And that earthquake looks like it does kind of around choice banded damage. So I do think this thing is choiced. And I'll tell you what, this thing hits extremely hard with the choice band. And with that speed boost, it's uh, a very fast fella as well. So... I take this opportunity just to bring in the Azelf. Now, obviously I'm floating above the ground, and he can't really stay in an Earthquake, and as I do want to set up my Stealth Rock, the problem is I cannot, and that is because of this asshole right here. The Hatterene comes in, and I decide to just go for the Psy Shock, kind of just a middle ground play here. Doesn't do much to the Hatterene as it comes in, and it turns out it's actually like, hey, I'm gonna head out. They just, <laughs> they have the Eject button, which is hilarious, and now, that just brings right back in Gouging Fire, and now my problem is just staring at me right in the face once again, so... <laughs> It comes in, it does soak up the sun once again, and it gets that speed boost. And I am focused Sash, so I know that I can take at least one attack from this thing. That's kind of the goal with Azelf, is to just be able to get as much chip as possible. Because again, this Gouging Fire is definitely the biggest threat on the team. So, here's the thing, they do go for the Raging Fury. That's gonna, that's gonna knock me down to my Focus Sash, and allow me to Psy Shock just a little bit of damage here. Um, but Raging Fury is actually, it's a fire type outrage, essentially. So this thing is locked into that fire move, and I'm like, ooh, I'd be rubbing my hands together feeling like this is the perfect opportunity to go into the Typhlosion, because we're going to be, we're going to be, we're just going to flash the guy. It goes for the Raging Fury because it's locked into it, 
And of course that activates that flash fire, makes my fire moves even more powerful. We're feeling good right now, especially with the sun boost, but then the sun goes away. So it's like, well, at least, you know, I got that, uh, that flash fire. And now a full power eruption is going to hit everything for some really good damage once again. And finding opportunities to get the Typhlosion in is going to be one of the ways that I can pull this game around. Against a scary team like this, it's, uh, it's not easy. So they actually decide to go into the Torkoal. There's not a lot that wants to switch into Typhlosion. Uh, especially with the boosted eruption and as I go for that that just absolutely destroys the turtle and down goes the Torkoal so it gets one last set of drought up and with that thing having a heat rock is gonna stick around which sucks so another problem is the next paradox asshole which is the freaking walking wake this thing is gonna be able to get that speed boost as well in the Sun which does make it yeah, faster than the Typhlosion and me being locked into the eruption, of course, I can't really risk taking any damage on this thing. I want to try to keep Typhlosion as healthy as possible uh, for the late game. So I decide actually just to go ahead and sack switch into the Azelf here as I get that 1 HP just absolutely ripped from my heart with a Hydro Steam boosted from the sun. And uh, this thing could be potentially choice specs, not exactly sure. So I now have at least an empty switch, so I can bring in the Hitmontop, and this little fella is kind of the only guy that can take one attack from this thing, and again, I just need some chip on this now. So, knowing that they probably just Hydro Steam, which is exactly what they're going to do, um, it is going to, it's going to be a 2 KO. Listen, nothing wants to deal with a walking wake, especially with the guys I'm working with, so at least I can get some nice solid damage with that close combat. That does a hell of a lot of damage. And I'm pretty happy with that. What we're not happy about is that Hitmontop's idle animation isn't him spitting on the top of his head like a top, which kind of pisses me off. But before I die, I can just go for a nice little bullet punch just for some extra, just kind of last ditch chip there. So they do Hydro Steam my ass in the next Tuesday, and down goes the Hitmontop. So that's kind of my only check that I have to switch into special attacks. And at this point, I do have an empty switch, and that's going to allow Jolteon to come in here and do some stuff. So. This Jolteon, as you guys probably are aware, is going to be... It's working with max HP over speed. And that is going to actually allow me to take an attack from this thing, depending on what it's working with. They go for the Draco Meteor, and I actually am able to hang on, which is honestly kind of amazing, because now I finish them off with an Alluring Voice. And not only that, but now that is going to actually activate my Flame Orb. So it is so damn hot out here that Jolteon got a damn sunburn. And with that Flame Orb, it's now going to activate my Quick Feed ability. So now with my speed, uh, with the 50% boost... I should be faster than things, except for a max speed gouging fire with that protosynthesis boost to its speed. So, as this fella comes in, it is uh, working with three turns of sun left. There is no Torkoal left, keep in mind. Uh, so this thing is going to be faster for the next three turns, and I am in a resource management kind of situation here. So, they go for the Earthquake, and we do kind of know that that actually locks them into that. We've seen that this thing is definitely choice banded, and thankfully at least this is going to now be able to allow me to switch into Scizor. They weren't able to go for a fire move because they at least know that Typhlosion uh, gets a free switch into that. So them being locked into Earthquake, I can now actually guarantee that Scizor lives one, at least take it pretty nicely, and then fire off a nice little close combat. Bad news is Gouging Fire was supposed to work today, but he actually called in Thick, and that is because this thing is thick as hell. It is able to at least live one close combat, from these big meaty claws and that is unfortunate the good news is though there's only one more turn of the sun left and as soon as that sun goes away this thing is going to lose its speed boost so i go for a bullet punch just as a last ditch effort before we go down it's kind of be what we're doing with bullet punches out here also that earthquake ends up knocking me out which is unfortunate because that was probably a minimum damage on the first one or something like that but finally, the sun goes away and the protosynthesis wears off. And I have a Typhlosion with the Choice Scarf is going to be able to outspeed everything they have left. And now it's time to see if Typhlosion can clean up the match for us. So I'm actually, I'm going to decide to lock myself into that eruption just because it's my highest damage. I know that I'm going to be faster than everything. And while the sun is gone, which was a nice little boost to us, it does at least allow us to outspeed this thing. And I can make up a little bit of extra damage by going for that Terra Fire. I put the candles on my head. Terra Fire boosted eruption at max HP is definitely not something to play games with. So that is going to finish off the Gouging Fire, which is amazing. That thing has been pretty much a monster this entire time. And now with their two mons left, they have this Hatterene. Hatterene, I don't know how the hell you say it, but this thing is surely going to suffer a scorching death via eruption. So, I go for that eruption, it turns out they actually do still have the Terra in their back pocket. I'm thinking, oh no. Do not be something that resists me. It turns out to be freaking Terra water. Worst case scenario 
for me in this late game was them having the defensive Terra Water, especially on something like this. I go for that eruption, just through the Terra Water, now no longer going to be able to grab the kill, which is wildly unfortunate, but it does put it in a spot where it's a two-hit KO. And this thing, as a general support role, Pokemon actually just goes for the Nuzzle, and that's not going to do much damage, so it does keep our eruption at very uh, high power. But it does paralyze me, which does offset the Choice Scarf. The good news is I'm actually able to break through the paralysis. I am still faster, of course. And one more eruption is going to be able to finish that thing off, even through its defensive Terra. So this now presents us with a very unique endgame because they have one Mon left, and we know that it's going to be that Petrarunt. I also know that unless this Petrarunt is max speed invested, I'm actually still going to be able to outspeed it, even being paralyzed, and all I have to do is break through, and this Eruption has a chance to grab a KO here. So, I do outspeed, it does not have speed investment, I'm able to get off this Eruption, keep in mind it's not fully max power, and it's just barely not enough to knock this thing out. So, it turns out this thing is actually, rather than going for the damage, going to go for the nasty plot, which is... A bold move, Cotton. Let's see how it plays out for them. They get that special attack boost, which now will allow them to kill me if I do get fully paralyzed here. I do, in fact, get fully parried, not able to finish it off with the final eruption. And now the Hex is going to be able to take care of the Typhlosion. So that was one of the craziest endgames ever. Truly, I really thought that uh, that, that Nasty Plot was going to come back to bite him, but... Uh, it is going to work out for him. That was honestly still just a really good game. Typhlosion is an absolute beast. And that's going to be the end of that one, which is going to bring us into game number two. Hey, if you've enjoyed the video so far, you should probably hit that like button. It sucks to be full YouTuber and ask for likes, but it really does help out the channel. And we do definitely appreciate it. So in this match, we've got a very interesting team with some definitely big threats. And let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so this time my opponent's going to go ahead and lead off with the Blastoise which is looking fierce over there, and I have a little Azelf who's just kind of here to chill. He's, he's not Azelf, he's Bezelf, sorry. So, in this situation, Azelf just always clicks Stealth Rock. Now, I'm Focus Sash. If this thing wants to Shell Smash, then so be it. I can at least then get an Energy Ball off on it for some nice chip, and I'm not super worried about a Turn 1 Shell Smash. So, I go ahead and set up those rocks, and this thing actually ends up going for the Flip Turn. So, they're going to end up breaking my Focus Sash, which is kind of annoying, but it also does give us a little bit of a, a look-see on what kind of kind of stoice we're working with here. So, they decide to go into the Scizor here, and I'm like, ooh, perfect. I can actually just outspeed and just straight up roast and toast him with a flamethrower. This is exactly what this Azelf is built to do. This thing has so much coverage that uh, it comes in clutch and just straight up knocks out the Scizor, which is perfect for us. So... That brings back in the Blastoise, and if it's flip turn, it's probably Rapid Spin, which I'm kind of expecting, but also, I have the coverage on this thing as well. I can go for that Energy Ball, do a round half, which is fantastic, and then that allows them to go for that Rapid Spin. So, while it does get rid of the Stealth Rock, I'm like, hey, I'm kind of just the Stealth Rock guy out here, and I can set those up just again. I kind of figure that as I go for the Stealth Rock here to outspeed, they probably just finish me with a Surf here, which I'm totally fine with trading, getting rid of Azelf here, if it means that I can keep my rocks up. So they go for the Surf, and I leave it with 1 HP, which ordinarily you're like, hey, that's sick, but you hate to see it here because as I go for the Energy Ball, it's not quite going to be enough to finish off the Blastoise, and now they can kill me with a Rapid Spin and get rid of the Stealth Rock. So that 1 HP live kind of hoed me. I'm not even going to lie. I would have much preferred... Just letting the damn guy die there. So it doesn't happen. They do, in fact, get rid of those rocks. And they probably have potential Focus Ashes in the back that uh, it might come back to bite me. So, at least at this point, Scizor looks like it has a really good matchup in this uh, in this game. So I can bring this thing in freely against the Blastoise. And it's time to start dancing. We're going to go ahead and give him a nice free show. But the Blastoise is actually like, no, I'm not interested. It does just flip turn out. And that's going to bring in the Noivern. So, in this situation, if Noivern comes in here, that definitely means it has the Flamethrower coverage, which, you know, most Noiverns do. So, as I get up that Swords Dance, looking at the damage, one Bullet Punch doesn't kill here with one Swords Dance. So, I actually decide this is perfect. I can go ahead and commit the Terra Fire, which will allow me to take a Flamethrower no problem. And then, after a second Swords Dance, I'll tell you what, this Bullet Punch is going to be... Needless to say, you do not want to be on the receiving end of these bullets. So, I go ahead and put the candle on my head, which seems weird to be see Scizor a fire guy, but that allows me to take the flamethrower, and now we dance once again. So, again, the Noivern does stay around for the nice little dance show, and sadly, if you see it, I'm going to have to kill you, because now 
I can go for a nice little plus four stab technician boosted bullet punch. And uh, that is going to hurt. They actually are going to bust out the Terra on the Noivern, but it turns out just to be normal. So I'm kind of like, what? They, they just go Terra normal pretty much for no reason here, I guess. Because a bullet punch is, in fact, still neutral. And at full health even, that's going to knock this thing out. That thing's HP just got obliterated in like a second. Never seen a damn health bar <laughs> down so quick. And that is going to be a dead Noivern. So that's both good because they commit the Terra. And also Noivern's just a fast asshole out of the way. So... That feels pretty good, but what does not feel good is the fact that I really feel like this Mammal Swine is going to have a Focus Sash. I can go for that Bullet Punch, and yeah, I had the feeling the Focus Sash comes through. It is able to live that Bullet Punch, and now being a Fire-type fool, I do in fact not enjoy Earthquake. So my own Terra came back to bite me, but more specifically, Azov came back to bite me, because if I still had my rocks up, Scizor sweeps the game, no problem. But instead, now we've got ourselves a little... A little rendezvous on our hands. So, at least now I can decide to go into the Typhlosion. And even if this thing has priority in the form of Ice Shard, obviously we do not give a damn. Also, shout out to them. I've said it before, making the freaking Typhlosion's flames out all the time. He looks much better when he's not just a weird tall sausage. He, with the flames, he looks badass. So, I can go for that eruption. It does take care of the Mammal Swine. And honestly, Typhlosion feels pretty good here because nothing really wants to take an eruption. And that's kind of just the moral of the story. Especially if there's no Stealth Rock up and full power eruptions, they hurt. So, they actually decide to go Toxtricity, and guess what? He was there for a second. Critical hit, I do not believe, mattered. And this, this thing was like specially defensive with an assault vest or some nonsense. So, that thing just gets absolutely roasted like a Sunday barbecue. And they are now down to two Pokemon left. So, as they go into Hitmonlee here, they're actually going to click Endure. And if you've been on the channel for a little while, you probably have seen this Hitmonlee, and I know exactly what this fella is going to try to do. So, Eruption does, of course, bring it down to 1 HP, and that is going to pop this thing's Leechy Berry. That gives him a nice little attack boost. Not only that, but it also activates its Unburden ability. Now this thing is incredibly fast, and it has an attack boost, and at 1 HP, Reversal is like one of the strongest moves in the game. So, I decide Typhlosion can be tucked in the back, saved for later. And basically, I'm like, hey, Bruxish, go ahead and come out here and see what's going on here. He comes out, and, and he's like, what, what is it? And a reversal right to the face. It, right to the teeth, actually. Just obl <laughs> obliterates us. So, we did what we needed to do with that. And here's the thing. I was here when the sacred texts were written about this Hitmonlee set. Not only that, but I freaking created the guy. So, I know that this thing wants to try to upper hand a priority. Sitting at, it's like a sitting duck with one HP. So, I decide to go into Hitmon top, and I'm going to bluff the fact that I'm going to go for priority. Because I know... This thing is surely going to go for the upper hand. Upper hand is a move that blocks priority and makes you flinch. So as they go for that, of course it does fail because I am not going to fall into the trap of being destroyed by my own damn Hitmonlee. And an Earthquake is going to finish it off instead. So that thing, it really does rely on prediction with the upper hands. And luckily we make the right call there. So Hitmonlee was just a perfect Mon to bluff a priority move there. So it works out perfect. And now the final Mon is going to be the Blastoise who is going to get punched in the tummy a few times, and he is going to be crawling back to the nurse's office with a strong tummy ache. So that is going to be the end of the game on that one. I thought the mind games with that Hitmonlee were super interesting, because if you click reversal instead of upper hand, I definitely just lose the game there. That's the fun with that Hitmonlee set. But uh, in general, some really fun games today. Thank you guys so much for watching. For real, I do really appreciate all the support. Having a lot of fun making these videos, and I hope you guys are continuing to enjoy. And uh, I will catch you guys next time. Peace out.